I note that last night, and thank God he's a good halfback. Thank God he's one of my, one of the most most athletic, gritty halfbacks in New Zealand rugby at the moment. Because otherwise, I wouldn't want TJ Perinara anywhere near a professional sporting franchise. And I see TJ social justice warrior Perinara has come out supporting the Pua, which is the Chicks Hurricanes rugby team. He's come out supporting them, saying he agrees with what he said and a harker is for saying what you think, etc. Yeah, that's fine, TJ. That's fine, TJ, if you're doing it somewhere else. But when you're doing a harker because you're getting paid by investors and fans in a rugby sporting franchise, that's not what the harker is for. The harker is there to entertain and excite the fans who are paying the money that allows you to have your bloody opinions, TJ. So I'd love to see TJ Perinara put his money where his big mouth is. I can talk. And um, maybe buy. Maybe you'll get together and buy the Hurricanes, TJ, and then you can use them for your own political campaigning and to express your personal opinions. But here's a suggestion, mate. In the meantime, shut up and keep playing the excellent rugby that you do. Just an idea, mate. And if you want to get into politics, get into politics separate from the rugby. Um, damn it, he is good, though. He can score a try and he's gritty. I like his rugby. I don't agree with him. Well, I don't agree with with, with, with the Harker thing. And TJ, of course, does. But it's not exactly surprising. I didn't fall off my chair when I see that TJ comes out supporting wokeism um, yesterday. His politics uh, have been playing for all to see. I can remember having a run in with him and his mum at some stage. Um, I can't quite remember what that was about. Um, good halfback or not, someone says he's still a halfwit. I agree with your statement. Cheers, Warwick. Thank you very much indeed, Warwick. Um, maybe rugby is only for Māori, TJ. No, well, that's not sure. His real name is TJ Overrated. Oh, that's unfair. Um... Sean, as part of your penance, you have to show us your tattoo. Okay, there you go. There it is. There it is. You got it. Okay, done. Um, thanks, Phil. Uh, Ray, how are you, Ray? Good. Um, Sean, when you spoke about the Baltimore Bridge today, you brought back a memory from 1997 to me, and it was the day that um, there was the avalanche at Threadbro in Australia. In oh, that's right. That was big, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 It yeah. was huge. Yeah. And I was listening to one of your older colleagues, Leighton Smith, on the day. Yeah. And he said, so has anybody heard about, I think it was an earthquake or something, with thousands have died or mm. something in Africa or something. And he said, and I've never forgotten this, white lives appear or first world country disasters get more. Coverage. Oh, there's no doubt about it. There's no doubt about and, it. And if, and if you've got pictures yes. and it's been on the interweb, you know, yeah. you're off to the races. And, and I'm not and, saying that we shouldn't mourn the six who died, no. and that it's not a no. tragedy and it's not dramatic. Um, but life is a random thing and many disasters occur every day all over the globe. Um, but yeah, this one, of course, is going to get more coverage. And at the time, Leighton said, it appears, you know, that somebody's life is worth more if they're in a first world country than a third world country. Yeah. And then he said, some, said something like, the mother grieving griefs the same in Africa yeah. as she does in the US. Yeah. And I've never forgotten that. Well said, Ray. Well said and well remembered. I thank you for your call. Yeah. I love it when I get a phone call before 7 30. I haven't even given out the number, which is 0800 333 0800 debate. Um, Sean, I have it on good authority that the boat that hit the bridge in Maryland was trying to avoid a dolphin. Uh, actually. <sighs> Okay, I'm in dangerous ground there. No, Reuben. Uh, I'm presuming we don't have families of any of the dead here and that I can see the irony and the humour in that joke. Uh, uh, Kieran says, TJ is a wokester. Heard him giving an interview a couple of years ago saying he's a vegan because of climate change. Um, 
Sean, we are well and truly in the era of professional sport. Time for all the haters to go. After all, Canterbury lost their crusader horsemen, says Brett. Yeah, I still regret that. Not going so well for the Cantabs this year, which I think we can all agree is a good thing. That will get the Cantabrians upset. Oh, the other things on the list today, we've done the budget uh, policy statement. Two other things on the list. Gosh, I've got time. The cyber attack by China in 2021 where they hacked into some parliamentary system here in New Zealand using their evil Chinese hacker brigade or hacker ninjas or whatever they have. And our government comes out three years later and says they did this at the same time that we're trying to get into a military alliance or or some sort of alliance deal with the UK, America and Australia. Pretty convenient timing. If Why wasn't it good enough to announce it three years ago? And, look, I just always presume that the Chinese are spying on us. I don't think we should all look funnily at Chinese nationals in the street. All uh, companies do that. Gosh, we've had a spy base at Wai Hopai in intercepting communications for ages uh, here, right here in New Zealand. So, I don't know. I know worthy journalists and diplomats and spooks around Wellington get all very serious. Oh, well, that's a bad deal. No, it's not. Pretty par for the course. So I'm not too worried about the Chinese hacking um, and outing it in our national interest. There's clearly some politics going on there. Well above my pay grade. Um, And also I've got to say, well, the um, Winston Peters claiming victory over the fact that a serious fraud office will appeal against the decision not convicting two men whose names are still uh, suppressed, of um, fraud for taking money that was intended for New Zealand First, putting it in a slightly different bank account with a slightly different name, and then doling it out. Well, Winston wants an apology. Well, Winston, I think you can probably whistle Dixie on the apology because, gosh, this stuff around New Zealand First and its funding procedures has been going on for a long time, and it is shady and dodgy. May not be illegal, but it's shady and dodgy. And the High Court, it's still... The High Court's finding that the men, these two men, unnamed, did obtain money from party donors, people who thought they were donating to New Zealand First, were donating to the New Zealand First Foundation, which was different. Uh, the The Court's finding that they did so by deception still stands and that they did intend to deceive the people giving the money. But the other elements needed to find them guilty on the charges before the court were not proven. Um, And that is that the men acted without a claim of right to that money. Now, so Winston, you can demand an apology or your party can set up a completely transparent donation system. And what the foundation appears to have been was a filter to that could have been seen to hide the real source of donations to the party because it goes through the foundation. Okay, no crime has been committed technically, but I don't think you're quite clean skin enough to say that you should get an apology from the serious fraud office, Mr Peters. And... Uh, interesting case because in some ways it's proven exactly what you can do in terms of gathering political money. Um, There we go. Um, And, of course, Winston will be banging on about this. I was going to also make this observation because it's what? It's Wednesday today, Ben? And because the news media haven't had a crack at Winston Peters, apart from this story, what have you heard about him this week? Nothing, nothing. And I did say last week, if you don't like Winston Peters, ignore him and he will effectively go away. Um, I just cover, and here at the platform, of course, we just cover what we think is uh, newsworthy uh, in any given day. That's it, Ben. I think we've done quite well in working through the list, making the apology. Um, And we are going to, after the uh, 7.30 news, we're going to talk to... Brian Tamaki, who is at the forefront of this move to stop men dressed as women 
reading stories. Presumably their target market is kids to kids in public libraries. Some people call it drag queen story time. I call it blokes dressed as Sheila's reading to kids in public libraries. Um, the Gisborne event went ahead yesterday. Hawke's Bay's just been cancelled. Um, let's find out what's motivating Brian Tamaki and his supporters to exercise a thug's veto in regards to these uh, matters. Um, Sean, I've lost a lot of respect for TJ after that, and that's why I don't want to see politics and sport. I don't know want to know about their politics. Oh, but he wants to tell you, doesn't he? Winston's done nothing wrong. Any smart New Zealand First supporter already knew this, though. Well, that's pretty any smart New Zealand First supporter. Oh, I'm going to get in trouble here. I, I'm saying that with a smile on my face. Uh, let's just say any New Zealand First supporter, shall we, Jesse? <laughs>